Okay. In last week's parsha, Perkhof Posuk Tezayin. At the time of Kabul, Satorah Hashem spoke directly to Kalal Yisrael. This is the only time anyone other than Moshe made a prophesize in the white weight state. This with all the Jews at Kabul Satorah. So Tezai Chov Tezai and Vyomer El Moshe Dabra Toi Mor of Nishmor. Rather than God speaking directly to us, you should speak to us. We will listen. Val Yedaber Imonu Elokim Penomus. Let God not speak to us because we made we will die. Meaning, the Svarnu explained why did the Jews at Sinai prophesize in the wake state? I mean, every other prophet prophesizes in a sleep state. Moshe Rabbeinu was the only one who prophesized in the wake state. Why? Because Moshe, his body was so pure, there wasn't a trace of self, therefore his body wasn't an interference, his physicality wasn't an interference for the Shechina, for the Divine Presence directly to communicate, even through his physicality. Any other Novi not being at that level, the body was not able to, ha didn't have the capacity to receive that level of communication, therefore prophecies directly to the soul, not through the body. So why at Sinai did every Jew prophesy in the wake state? To give them an understanding that it's possible for you may mean to prophesy in the wake state to accept the level of prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu. That Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy was in a wake state, not a sleep state like all the other prophets. Because one of the uh, principles of Jewish faith is that Moshe Rabbeinu was Avanavim. He was the father of prophets greater than any prophet who preceded him or any prophet that will follow him. So the Jews to be able to accept this as a reality, they had to experience that level of prophecy in that context of being in a wake state. This is the Sephardo. But factually, they weren't qualified. And therefore they said to Moshe, If God speaks to us, we're going to die. We don't have the capacity. Okay? Vayome Moshe el so what did Moshe respond to them? Al tiro, don't be afraid. Kivarod nasus eschem boelukim. That why is he doing this to elevate you? Uvavor tia yurosa pnechem, and that his fear should be upon your face. The guilty sechto, that you shouldn't sin. So over here the Sifarno says, why did he communicate you in a wake state? to acquaint you with a prophecy that a prophecy could be in a wake state, face to face. Even though we didn't have that clarity, So therefore, the value was that you should understand to accustom you that there could be a prophecy at this level. Okay, that's the Sifarno. However, Rashi learns differently. Why did God communicate them in a wake state? Lagadal eschem ba'olam. To elevate you in the world, to give you a certain level of renown. Sheyetz l'chem shem ba'umos. You should have renown among the nations of the world. Shuhu b'chvodo nigla aleichem that he himself in his own glory revealed himself to you. That's to elevate you. So what's elevate you? Elevate you in the eyes of the nations. That he himself in his own glory appeared to you. Okay? That's what it's about. That's to elevate you. To elevate you in the eyes of the nations. Now, we had earlier that when we left Egypt, it says, God led us out of Egypt. We had the clouds of glory in every direction. And then we had one cloud leading us, and in front of that cloud, it says, God led them. So the Mejtan Chuma says, why did God lead us? What was, why was it necessary for God himself to lead us? So the nations should see the value of the Jewish people. The God that created himself is leading the Jewish people to elevate us in the eyes of the world that they should revere us and they should esteem us. That's why God led us out of Egypt and he led us in the desert to show us the way. So the Midrash continues. 
Here, God led us so the world should see the value of the Jew, to revere us, to esteem us. Rather than that, they murder us, and they torture us, and they persecute us. This is the Medrash. And ultimately, there's going to be a day of reckoning because they did not make the proper takeaway. That's the Midrash. This is the second time. So the leading in the desert, that's its value. Why over here did God reveal himself to us in a wake state? To elevate you in the eyes of the nations that they should understand that God himself appeared to you which he never appeared to anyone else. But that's its value. So again, it's to re-emphasize that point in terms of the innate value of the Jew versus the nations of the world. We find by Shabbos, we say, when we say, V'sham Nisus Shabbos, we say, Osi Beinu V'neichem. It's a sign between us and him that he only gave us the Shabbos. He didn't give the Shabbos to the nations of the world. Also, it's to indicate that there's a special relationship between God, the creator, and the Jewish people, which he doesn't have that relation with any other nation. So we find three instances. When we left Egypt to give the nations an understanding of who we are, which totally fell on deaf ears. When he spoke to us at Sinai, it was open in the open state to elevate us in the eyes of the nations, that they should revere us and esteem us. And giving us the Shabbos is Osi Benu Venechem. That's a, a sign of distinction of that relationship that we were chosen to be the testament to the world that God's the creator. Okay? Now, there was a question which we discussed in the past. Bilam was the nation, was the prophet of the nations. Why did, and what was the level of Bilam's prophecy? It was in, in a certain aspect, it was the equivalent of Moshe. Why? Because the nations of the world came to Hashem and said, do you know why the Jews are so special? Because he gave them a prophet as great as Moshe Rabbeinu. If you'd give us a prophet as great as Moshe, we'd also behave differently. Hashem says, okay, I'll give you a bill. Let's see how you behave. So rather than becoming more committed to God, they, they, they used him, they commissioned him to curse the Jews, to destroy the Jewish people. So therefore, that's even a greater level of condemnation on the nations of the world. So the obvious question is, who is Bilam? He's a man who committed bestiality. He's a man who was self-absorbed with his own ego. He suffered from megalomania. I mean, this, this is a response that this is the equivalent of Moshe Rabbeinu. That's the question we asked. So what I answered in the past was that the Gemara says in Zvachim that at the time of Kabbalah Satora, the world was quaking. And the nations of the world come running to Bilam, their prophet. And he says to them, they, they say to him, God is destroying the world. So Bilam says to them, impossible, because God made a covenant with existence at the time of the great flood, he's not going to destroy the world. So they said to Bilam, that was with water. Maybe he's destroying the world of fire. So he said to them, you're a bunch of fools. Don't you realize Hashem owes la mogitain? Don't you realize God is giving his power to the Jewish people? So they answered, Hashem yivorech hasam over shalom. God should bless his people with peace. And they all went on the merry ways. I mean, after understanding what was happening at that moment, what should have they done? They should have embraced monotheism. They said, oh, now that we're in a safe place, we're going back home. How do you go back home after understanding what's going on? The world, that you believed at one moment that the world was coming to an end. And God, they, he shares with you what's happening. Evidently, it's such a monumental event. How do you not embrace this? That was the value of Bilam. The only value of Bilam. Because only he could share with them, give an understanding of what was happening at that moment. Okay? That was my answer in the past, if you recall. But with this Rashi, it's even more so. It says, why, why did God prophesy openly with the Jewish people, speak directly to them? Let God to elevate you in the, in the world. That renowned should go out among the nations. That he personally revealed himself to you. To give that special esteem. Now, how did they know that? How did that, the world was quaking. How did they know that God himself appeared openly to the Jewish people? Who shared that with them? That's, that's, that's Bilam. Bilam is the one who shared that with him. It's even more than just being aware of the event and not becoming part of monotheism. But how after knowing 
what happened and that God himself appeared to us and openly communicated with us, how do you treat the Jews? <clears throat> how do you treat them? That you want to destroy them? Therefore, that's, the, that's, that's their value. That's the value of Bilam. Because it says, our renown went out among the nations of the world. How did it go out? They had no idea what was going on. The answer is, Bilam shared this with them. So I was just thinking as I'm talking now, just the very interesting, very interesting, very interesting. The Gemara tells us, it's a Medrash, not a Gemara, that why did the Jews sin with the golden calf? Why? Because the nations of the world gave Klaus on Ayin Hora. That since Kabul Sado was done in a public setting, so therefore <coughs> they were envious and they gave us an Ayin Hora because that Ayin Hora that created a prosecution that we should be subject <coughs> to the Chet Egil. Now, how did they know? And therefore, we find by the Mishkan, Vosli Migdash Mishkanti Besochan, that God came to us in a concealed context, right? The Luchas Rishonos, the first tablets were given public. The second were given in concealment. Moshe came down in Yom Kippur, we were reinstated, it was hush. The first time, the, it was the whole world knew about it. How did they know about it? And how did they know about it? It was Bilam. Bilam revealed it to them. What is Bilam's essence? Bilam's essence was Ayin Hora. Bilam's essence was Ayin Hora. And therefore, the evil eye, through him, the nations of the world gave the evil eye to us, and that caused the Chet Egel, which did not allow the world to come to a level of perfection, and therefore, all the Chil Hashem that went from that point forward, and the whole issue of Mocho Tim Chazecha Amolek, that Amolek, why did they, they attack us? Why did they attack us? Because again, we were minimized. Through Bilam, we were minimized. Which means Amalek attacked us. Remember, we discussed Ibn Ezra. I mentioned Ibn Ezra. Ibn Ezra says, in terms of Lotachmot, one of the Ten Commandments is you should have, not have designs on your fellow's house, his wife, his possessions. So the Ibn Ezra asks, how's it possible to control that? You have envy. The person's envious. I, I feel his wife should be my wife. I want a wife as special as his wife, possession wise, everything wise. So the Vinez explains it with an allegory. If you have a prince and a princess, and the princess is one of a kind in her qualities and her beauty, in her, she's poised, the commoner is not envious of the prince, because he understands the princess is only for the prince. So if a person understands what it, what's for each person is not for the other person, there's no envy. It's only because you believe what the other person has is rightfully yours, okay? As a result of that, you, if a person understands that, there's no lotach mode. A person will not envy anybody else. Each person's life is tailor-made for himself. What you receive is to address your mission, and what someone else receives is to address his mission. If you put that in that perspective, there's no envy. You don't have designs on any. That's the Ibn Ezra. So what I said was that when the Torah was given after Kriyas Yamsuf, what does the Torah tell us? The world was terrified and trembled in the presence of the Jew because God never did for any other nations what he did to the, for the Jewish people. He destroyed the Egyptian armies, destroyed the Egyptian civilization. They deserved to be destroyed, but he only destroyed them because of us. So we were held at, on a pedestal, which nobody was held on that pedestal. We are the princes. There wouldn't have been envy. What happened when Amoli attacked us? When they attacked us, the analogy is a person jumping into a, a scolding bath. Everybody was afraid to approach the bath. Amoli attacks us. He says they're no different than the rest of us. He cooled the bath down for the world. God says, I will never, ever forgive them. They should be obliterated from under the heavens. Why? Because the only reason why, why, why did we do the Chet Egel? Because Ayin Hora. Why, did, why was the Ayin Hora? What did Amoli do? By attacking us, he minimized that perception and now we're seen as peers. We're equals with every other nation. So now they have a question. Why did you give the Torah to the Jewish people? Why not to us? Until then, there was no question. They are on the pedestal. They are the prince. But when Amoli attacked us, and said, there's nothing to be fearful of. They're no different than anyone else. So once we were brought to that level, to a peer level, so now, why, why, was, why was Torah given to us? 
the Zion Horror, that's Lo Sachmod. Once you have that, now you have a Chet Egel. You have a Chet Egel, the world never reached its level of perfection because we sinned with Chet Egel, we reverted to Posin of Odom.